going on everyone? This is Austin from Call on Our Shot and today we're going to talk about three must draft running backs outside the first round. Now, not talking about the Christian McCaffrey's of the world, the Dalvin Cooks, the Derrick Henry's. Those guys will all go within the first couple picks of your draft. This is going to talk about after the, that first round, you know, navigating rounds two, three, four, five, those rounds that really can make or break your draft. Now, round one, you're really just hoping not to screw it up. You're hoping to get a solid starter, someone that will be top three or four of their position. You can call it quits. Now, in rounds two or three or four, you got to find those stars that can make that leap up into that top stratosphere. Now, where are we going to start? First, subscribe to the channel if you are new. We're closing in on 8,000 subscribers. Shout out to all the people that are supporting every single video. New daily fantasy football videos. So shout out to you guys for supporting all of them. We'll be back tomorrow on Sunday for some more. We're only a couple Sundays away from NFL football. Woo! It is good to start. Where are we going to start with? Jonathan Taylor, RB10, ADP, pick 16. Now, going outside of the first round, and there's a realistic possibility in your draft. Maybe you're in a 10-team league. You could snag Devontae Adams in round one, Jonathan Taylor in round two. That's a dynamic one-two punch, and I think it gets better than that. Now, you talk about Taylor. He's fallen four spots in ADP just from the past week or so from Carson Wentz and Quentin Nelson both being out. People are like very scared. They're like, oh, I don't want to draft him, Quentin Nelson, whatever. Now, I understand that concern, but it doesn't concern me too much. There's been reports over the past couple days that those two guys, Carson Wentz and Quentin Nelson, could be back for week one. I think that's probably what we'll see. If they're not back for week one, I would expect them within week two, three at the latest. Now, you look at Jonathan Taylor. It was an absolute stud in his rookie year, and arguably, he didn't get enough run, and that's what we're going to talk about. Now, this guy was running back four in standard scoring, running back six in PPR last year. An absolute crazy stud, and yet he's going what? running back 10, and this guy hardly even saw that much work and during the first half of the season. Now you look at it, for weeks 13 through 17, the last five games of the season, no one better than this guy. He was RB1 the last five weeks. When it all counted, fantasy playoffs were on the line, he stepped up, and that's what you need. You need a guy that's going to carry you through those fantasy playoffs and get you into that playoffs and get you a championship, and he turned it on when it mattered. Now I understand there's a concern for rookie, or not for rookie, for the second year guy, because it's the Colts, and you know they love their running back by committee. Now you got Naheem Hines. Naheem Hines, yeah, of course, he's going to be annoying enough to steal some, some run away from Jonathan Taylor. You obviously got Marlon Mack, who's returning from injury. And, of course, you know, they always got another guy, Jordan Wilkins. Maybe he's still there. But the Colts know Jonathan Taylor, far and away, their best running back on, on tape and on the field. He's the most dynamic guy they got there. And you don't just... You don't just take a guy like that off the field for 30% of the snaps. You put him on there as much as you can. Get him the ball in his hands. And I think he's going to see 20 to 25 touches per game. And he's going to wreak havoc on the league. His schedule also lines up pretty well. You know, he's got a lot of easy matchups in there, obviously, with the Jags and the Texans. But he also only had 36 receptions last year. I expect that to get closer to 50 this year when he's used a little more. I'm locking him in. I'm taking him in that second round. If he's still there, I expect him to creep up closer and closer to that first round towards the end of that turn. I think he'll be in there when it's all said and done. Moving on to the next guy. You already know I'm hyped on him. J.K. Dobbins, RB20, ADP pick 43. I've been all in on the Dobbins hype train ever since I started these fantasy football videos a couple days ago, or a couple weeks ago. His talent jumps off the page. R the rookie last year at Ohio State, second year guy. Opportunity is the thing that cost him in his first year. And he was still very good. You think back to 2020, his first six games of his rookie season, he had a tw total of 25 carries. Yes, only 25 over six games. Then they have their bye week in week seven. What did they do in week eight? They said, we're feeding this man. And they realized, the Ravens finally realized this guy is an absolute stud. Now, from weeks eight through 17, when he actually started getting carries that gave Mark Ingram the boot, metaphorically, he was still a locker room presence, but more metaphorically gave him the boot. Weeks eight to 17, RB11 for J.K. Dobbins as he's going as RB20. This guy scored a touchdown in his final six games, capped that off with a two touchdown performance in week 17. There's no denying this guy's talent. With the second year in the offense, Lamar Jackson likely will, you know, he's going to get better as a passer. He's, no one expected him to be Peyton Manning coming right out of college. He's got a couple years in the system. He's going to get better and better. They finally addressed the wide receiver concerns, although Hollywood Brown and Rashad Bateman both injured. Now this guy's talent and the offense alone, he could be a top five running back in the NFL in terms of talent fantasy football, you name it. I've talked extensively about this guy in my top five breakout candidates in fantasy football video. That'll be linked at the end. Now, if you get a chance to draft this guy in like round four or beginning of round five, take him. You won't regret it. He's an absolute stud. As we hear some thunder, that's J.K. Dobbins laying the thunder on your opposing linebacker. That's exactly what he is. Now, let's do a resume. We're moving on to the third guy that we're talking about. Let's do a blind resume. All right, we got player one. He averaged, and this is a shout out to the Fantasy Focus podcast for the blind resume. I love what they do with it. And we're going to start with him. Player one averaged 16.5 fantasy points per game, played 10 games, and is currently being drafted as running back seven, pick 13. Now, 
Player two averaged 16.4 fantasy points per game, played 10 games last season, and is going as RB21, pick 60. Now pick player one, Austin Eckler. Player two, Miles Gaskin, and he's the next topic. I just told you, RB21, ADP pick 60. Gaskin, stud in 2020 when healthy, very similar to Eckler, who was also a stud. Now, I just gave you the stats, and I'm not saying Gaskin's going to score more fantasy points than Eckler. I'm not going to put that up on the board, but I'm saying this guy's being undervalued in fantasy football. Now, this guy, he just needs the opportunity, and he just needs to stay healthy, very similar to Austin Eckler. Now, I understand Malcolm Brown is down in Miami now, and Malcolm Brown, if you had a at Cam Akers or Dar Darrell Henderson last year, you were just like, ah, this Malcolm Brown guy stinks. And I understand. He was just annoying. He was just a pest. He would just steal touchdowns here and there. But this is Miles Ga Gaskin's job to lose. Savant Ahmed still in Miami. But you look at this guy, Miles Gaskin, a legit running back too. And I think he has the potential to be even better. Now I perform over guys very similar, drafted a little bit above him, like Josh Jacobs or even the aforementioned Daryl Henderson, now, who I do think is a little bit undervalued, who has a good chance, but he's very boomer bust nature. Especially he was that in Memphis. He was either running for 100 yards or not doing all too much. Now, either way, I'm in on the Gaskin train. He's got the opportunity to be a real stud in fantasy football. And if you went wide receiver heavy in the first five rounds, Gaskin could be sitting there right at pick 60. That is a perfect player for you. Now you could slide him in. If you can get him as your RB2, you're set. I think he's very low being ter in terms of his ADP. This is a guy that, that really succeeded. I mean, I gave you that blind resume. He was an absolute stud. Miles Gaskin is no joke. I think he's got good talent. And I think that offense to a tag of, tag of Vilo can't be possibly worse. Now, Ryan Fitzpatrick did come in and back clean up. He did help them out on offense. But I think Tua, Tua will be much better. The, the offense will be, they addressed the wide receivers. They really only had Devontae Parker and like Jakeem Grant who just ran fly routes every single time. Obviously you got Devontae Parker, you got Jalen Waddle who could be a legit wide receiver rookie and you got Will Fuller who will miss the first game of the season but I'm not too worried about that. And Miles Gaskin, I think he's poised for a very, very, very good fantasy football year and that's why I'm targeting him. Running back 21, he's pick 60. Now he, there's a, you see the big drop off you saw J.K. Dobbins running back 20 at pick 43. Then there's about 17 picks before the next average drafted running back. That doesn't surprise me too well. Now, I'd say Miles Gaskin's the last running back right in that tier that I really feel confident. You get to Daryl Henderson, then you start getting to like the Chase Edmonds, the Travis Etienne's, uh, the James Robinson's, Kareem Hunt's of the world. I don't really want to be starting any of those guys week one. Dar Miles Gaskin, arguably your last shot at getting that one of those stud running backs that I really do think has a chance to be you know, RB1 or RB2 consistently each and every week. That's why I'm targeting him, hit targeting him in drafts as I can get him. Now that's going to be the end of this video. We obviously talked about Miles Gaskin. We had a homer for him. We had J.K. Dobbins, love that guy. And we had Jonathan Taylor, three stud running backs that you guys should target in rounds you know, after round one of fantasy football. Now I got a bunch of other videos popping up on the screen. If you want to check them out, I'd really appreciate it. We talked about five breakout stars. Yesterday's video, we talked about a couple, we talked about a couple, three top running backs to avoid. So it's basically the opposite of this. You know, we talked about three top 20 running backs to take today. Yesterday, we talked about three top 20 running backs to avoid, five deep sleeper running back or wide receivers. We got a lot of content coming every single day. So subscribe to the channel if you are new. We really appreciate it. It's been Austin. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Who knows what we're covering tomorrow, but I'll be back. I think we're going to cover, we're going to cover some must draft players in each round of fantasy football. We're going to talk about round one, round two, round three, round four, round five, round six, all the way to the end of the draft. It's been Austin. I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Peace.